Could we get a renewable fuel source from cyborg bacteria? Here on Earth, carbon is really important stuff. We are carbon-based life forms, and not just me and you. Birds, bees, we're all carbon-based. But carbon dioxide can be a problem. It's a greenhouse gas, and if there's a lot of it, well, it can lead to localized warming, which can contribute to climate change. So reducing or capturing carbon dioxide emissions is vitally important before it vents to the atmosphere. And there is a blooming field of research that is dedicated to this. Artificial photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, just for a biology refresher, is the process that plants and some organisms use to capture solar energy and convert it into chemical energy. They then use that to turn stuff like carbon dioxide and water into biomass. Artificial photosynthesis can also capture solar energy and carbon dioxide and water and make useful stuff like acetate. All right, so some scientists from the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and from the University of California, Berkeley, teamed up and wrote a paper on this. And it has a really catchy title. It's Nanowire Bacteria Hybrids for Unassisted Solar Carbon Dioxide Fixation to Value-Added Chemicals. Rolls off the tongue. But the research is amazing. They needed to do two things. They needed to be able to capture solar energy and convert it into something else like electricity, and they needed to be able to capture carbon dioxide to build something useful like acetate. So they used nanotechnology and biology to make cyborg bacteria. Sort of. Let's look at the nano bits first. They built nanowires made of silicon and titanium oxide. When solar energy hits it, it generates electrons and electron holes. It passes the electrons to its tag team partner, bacteria, specifically Sporomusa ovata, which is an anaerobic bacteria that, when it accepts electrons, can capture carbon dioxide and convert it into something else, like acetate. Acetate is a biosynthetic building block, and it can be turned into all sorts of chemicals. So if you gather it and give it to a different type of bacteria, say a genetically modified form of E. coli, you could synthesize all types of chemicals, including a synthetic fuel that's similar to gasoline. So imagine, you could capture carbon emissions and then make a renewable fuel source. It's a win-win scenario. Right now, this technology isn't efficient enough for commercial use, but the team hopes to continue boosting that efficiency, and they think that they can get to a point where we can actually roll this out worldwide. Ultimately, I don't think it's going to replace our other renewable energy technologies, but it could certainly augment them, and this means our future could be amazing. I've got a question for you guys this week. What do you think is the future of energy? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. And join the forward-thinking think tank. Subscribe to the channel. We have new episodes out every Wednesday. And finally, if you want to check out more amazing videos about the future of energy, just look right over here.